Welcome to another week of Grand Caliber. We have a lot for you today. Marco gets called to verify a very unique watch. We do some unboxing. And really, the big thing this week is actually some frustration that I've had with the company. I've been preaching customer service for the last few weeks because I want to change the culture. I want to make sure that clients are getting the best service possible. And I just think our team completely dropped the ball this week. Uh, we do a full on meeting about what we're doing wrong. It's been frustrating. I've just been literally on the phone talking with clients and trying to put out some fire. So stay tuned for another episode of Grand Caliber. What's going on, bro? Nothing much. Hey, I have a watch you're probably going to want to come see. I think you'll like it. What is it? I'm not going to tell you. You have to come over. Oh, God. <laughs> all right. All right. I'll, I'll swing by in a little bit. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. See you Bye. soon. Josh called and said he had some watch he wants to show me. Knowing Josh, it's going to be something either vintage or really interesting that he just thinks it's going to really spike my interest, but we'll see. I'm guessing it's gonna be something of a vintage sub or a Pepsi GMT. The last few they've hit me up on were Pepsis. Please don't cut me off. They've been getting a lot of um, vintage stuff in lately. It's kind of interesting to see that, so that's cool. You know, I always do my best to help them out whenever they have questions on vintage, so, you know, hey, we always help each other out where we can. If it's a uh, vintage Pepsi or maybe a Tiffany & Co doll or something, that'd be really awesome to see. Puma. What do you got for me, Josh? I got Looks modern. I got something nice for you. You called me for modern? No, no, no. It's, I think it's special enough that you'll appreciate right, it. Let's see it. Ready? Here. I don't think he'll notice. He might be like immediately. I, I'm pretty quick to pick up stuff like this. It's subtle, no? It's a subtle, but it's a cream, cream Daytona. Dang, dude. It's oh, a little that creamy. Fast. It's like, yeah, it's off-white doll. Have you guys ever seen the ones that are like really creamy, like online? Well, yeah, that's why I was surprised you got so fast. Do you guys have a white dot to compare to? What's that? Absolutely. Yeah, bring that because I want to show the camera because like it's going to be hard to notice on camera. All right, if you can see, we're looking at the white. So this is like white, white. And this is what looks like it's going, what they call the Panadol 116520. Uh, these typically start turning more an off-white to a yellow to an ex sometimes in extreme cases, it almost turns like a, like a strong, strong yellow color. Like if you guys seen the Cream Doll Explorers, these also do the same thing. They kind of turn cream over time. I love those explorers. Yeah, and this, you know, this one's getting there. Looks like it's on the way. So over time, this will continue to yellow up. So. so what you're saying is I should just put it on the roof of my car. Yeah. Listen, the Italians <laughs> like to bake these things at around 400 degrees. How much value does that add to the watch? Well, so the value is going to be all, you know, really it's going to be a perspective of how yellow is it. You know yeah. what I mean? So this is more of an off-white. I think it adds value, but it's not gonna, you're not gonna get that full on, oh my God, I have a Panadol, like it's yellow, you know, like a Cream Doll Explorer. I mean, it's definitely it turning. Be, oh yeah, over time, but you gotta earn your stripes, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, so you gotta, you gotta keep it for the long haul. Let um, them know also how much will a 116520 regular okay. dial right. go versus market, that? Okay, here's my opinion on this watch. In this market, if you wanted a old style Daytona, this is an early one. I can tell you without even popping the band, it's most likely a Y serial. Because that's commonly what you find them in the very early run. So it's like P, A, Y, and K. Yeah. Or where they're more commonly found. I think in this market, a normal K serial Daytona is probably complete with, you know, box papers. I want to say 28.5 guys. I mean, right? 20, Maybe, I'd say yeah. 27 to 28. 20, 28, 27, 28. And then... You know, they were like at 32. Close to what we said. Yeah. yeah, so add a add a cr little cream dial to it, I would say it should be around 35, 36. Yeah. You know, if it was very aggressive, this would be a 50, 60K watch. Right. If someone were to buy that watch and kept it and it yellowed like like extremely over time. It's, it's just an investment out. that goes up and up. Yeah, you can't lose out. Because the yellower it gets, the more expensive it gets. Let's take it outside. I want to see how it looks in the sun. Yeah. Well, compare it to your white Ferrari. Compare it. This would be, be a bad time to tell you that it's fake, right? The Ferrari's fake? I knew it. You guys, you guys, I told you guys to quit buying Fieros, bro. It's almost the exact same color. Like the car's a little off-white in person, but see how it has like a, you see how it's a very off-white? It's not quite white. Well, it's, there's yellow, you know, there's yellow in there. These are very special, especially when like 
they're bought from people who just you know they just don't know so it's like I'd, I'd rather buy this from somebody who just had it for all these years and just like i don't know whatever it is the dollar turn whatever than buying it from a dealer who's pushing it as such because i don't know it's weird like i like just the natural transition from owner to collector and these type of cases you know that's just the best way to buy a watch in my opinion when it's special like that because then there's no questions asked it's off white like the ferrari yeah right so which means you need to clean that car. It's dirty as hell. It's <laughs> <hella. Get laughs> Your car's got a lot of patina. <laughs> Cigars International with the uh, Wolven team. I'm just gonna pop in for an afternoon cigar and uh, shop around. I actually need some cigars, I'm out. Marco, like the selfish jerk that he always is, decided uh, just to like, embarrass us and pay for all our cigars as if we can't afford them. That's gonna cost you a lot. <laughs> all right, guys, we just had a you know nice little afternoon run with the Wolven guys. Uh, they showed me their Pana Daytona. It's a very sweet watch. I think I might have a client for something like that. And then uh, we're heading back to Dallas and just continue on with our day, continue on with uh, selling more watches. So today what we're going to do is shoot some videos for our website explaining the different services that we provide, things like the consignment process, finding a watch or selling a watch. You know, a lot of time a client will reach out and they want to consign their watch or they want to buy their watch, but they don't really know the full process and what's included. We're going to make some videos today we'll go, that will go onto our website that will explain the entire process just to give, you know, clients a little bit more reassurance. That's what we're here to do today and uh, hopefully I can do it in one or two takes but knowing me it might be a couple. say complete um normally i don't know when when you say you know when people say complete as far as everything you know if it's missing a hand tag it's i guess necessarily not complete right it, it just depends but i mean if you have all that the more the merrier of course you know uh it definitely helps i mean that watch right there i think if you do list it that's the 116400 uh 116 400 V. What year is it? It's a 12. So yeah, man, I think if you price it at 10K, that's the price we, we can move it at. And then remember, as stated, for that price point, we charge 10%. So you would net nine. Okay. But if you want, you don't have to t say verbally, you can just text me that serial, and then I'll include that on the consignment agreement. And then we'll get that label over, and it'll be fully insured next day. All right, no All right cool. Pleasure talking with you. You got it, boss. All right. All right. That was my man. He's uh, bought a few pieces, a couple of bright lens, two of this, and slowly but surely worked his way up to some Rolexes. Now he had, he's going to be sending this one in here. It is a 116400 uh, GV. That's a Goss. I'm going to bring that in for a complete set, 2012, and we're going to offer or sell it for 10K. So if you guys are watching this and uh, interested in a Goss, that's a really good deal for a good price point. We're walking and talking. We're walking and talking. All right, let's we'll walk and talk. Oh, we got some clients here. One of the big exciting things that we're gonna launch probably in the next week or two, I think you saw in the last video, which was talking about servicing. We have a ton of clients that come in asking about servicing, whether that's a polish or full service. I have now pinpointed the watchmaker that we're gonna use for our servicing. We have the contract in place. We have the pricing. So the last thing that we really need to do is make sure that we can get it onto the website in a way that is interactive for the consumer. So just really delivering that's, that service. So that's the goal this week. We have Ty who does our marketing, making sure that it's on the website in the, in the coming week, making sure that the form submissions work, making sure that we have someone here that can gather that information, reach out to the clients. So we're building the infrastructure for that. But I'm really excited to launch servicing because not only is that an additional service that we can 
help clients with, it's also an additional revenue stream, right? I mean, we wanna make sure that this business has multiple revenue streams, whether that's just selling watches or eventually servicing and, and potentially jewelry or things like that. So yeah, that's the big thing that we're launching this week. That's my first actually second time. Uh he had bought it in before. You know what I'm saying? Good dress watch, bro. Yeah, yeah. Got that rich and mirror kind of K shape. See, that's why I didn't come here for a bit. I come to pick up man and go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, this, this ain't ours, man. Uh, clients bringing on to just kind of see what we can do on those. Can I borrow some money? What you need? How much you need, bro? About 20. Twenty thousand. Uh, yeah. Let me get my calculator. Huh? Let me get the interest rates and the fat rate. Time market. I say interest rates. Uh, that one ain't on card. No, you remember? Oh man, you know what? Hey, I oh, you that. told him not That's the to. Seven hundred dollar card, dude. bro. God dang oh. it, man. What happened? I totally forgot. So we got this watch. The client was waiting on the card. What watch? That uh, Panera. So he was like, "Hey, the card. If y'all want it, seven hundred dollars. If not, don't worry about it." <laughs> So we bought it for seven, we bought it for seven hundred less. Oh no! I only said that because oh. this motherfucker said he was gonna keep it. So I was like, you know what? We're never gonna take it back. Right. <laughs> so I mean, he doesn't care about the car, so we don't need the car. I don't even know. So I'm gonna He's making shit up. <laughs> <laughs> I know you told him complete, so if we have to, bro. I just had to get the card from the from the dealer. Man, I don't even know why we even charge you for it. Well, everything has a cost. I don't know. I'd rather pay like three hundred. What are you gonna do with it? Let me ask him if he got it. Like seriously, what is he gonna do with it? Uh, anyway, back to you, bro. Can I get one of those? Maybe. Oh, nah, this one's one on one, bro. I paid extra for that. Look, we can get one made. He just got the one on one that big, so we just gotta get ours, you know. Little... I just want a little smaller. Exactly. Like a Same here. Actually, yo, know, what I really want, I want to make a ton of micro ones. We are. And then like later, when we're when we're good, for your good customers, for our good customers, I can. Boom. That's what they did at Manhattan. That's what know. I love. For him. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. they did that for you. I don't want something like that. See, I'm, I'm like, I was joking with him back. though yesterday. I said, "You, they might have gifted that to you, but you paid for that." <laughs> I paid for it. <laughs> I pay. got it cheap, but I still paid. Yeah, for he done paid for about twenty of. <laughs> if I'm gonna wear somebody's logo, trust me, I'm uh, not gonna pay no full meal bill. Yeah. Uh -huh. So my man Harold has been. Man, he really, really, really been on me for this Panera rose gold. Right. These text messages go back a whole year that uh, he was wanting this watch. So finally, finally, about nine, ten months later, we found one. Two weeks later, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> they both look good. That's a chunk of gold, though. They yeah. both look good, man. But I've been asking for this for about two years, I believe. We're running through the counter real quick. Yeah. Man, that's only you around this month. What you think? I think it looks good on you, man. If anybody I know you, you think I should get a black band? Yeah, I think it looks good. I mean, it looks good on this brown, but. I, yeah, it does look good on the brown, but I, I know black me, band. and With I'm going to go to Hublot and get a black band. 5150. Uh, and then the watch. Yeah, and the watch is in here. Okay. So. Yes, sir. I'm going to go ahead and get an invoice sent over all through Chrono Key. Cool. Mr. Harold. I don't know if you guys remember him from uh, back at the Crescent. He used to come through all the time. Still doing business till today, every day. My man just picked up this beautiful, what is that, 45 millimeter hoop? Yeah, it's a 45. Uh, yeah, classic fusion. Yeah. Rose yeah, gold. Man. Yeah, sir. Now I gotta go get my rose gold ring. Don't worry, if one of you guys want that, we'll see it back. <laughs> so, <laughs> I got you, that's not a problem. Man, I gotta go, because I'm parked in the, uh, what's the name? I hope they don't tell me. Vic, you wanna get some lunch? Let's do it. Heck yeah, I'm This starving. guy beat this guy in last month's sale. So <laughs> look, as, look a how treat, he's <laughs> as a treat, I'm gonna take Vic out to uh, lunch. When I'm selling at the top, they don't even recognize me. This guy is supposed to be like the number one pick. Number one. And when you're the number one pick, it's all downside because either you do really well and you live up to the hype, or you don't do very well and you don't live up to the hype. So that, that's what happens when you're the number one pick. to my lady. She said yes, by the way. 
<laughs> Congratulations. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So I got down on one knee in this watch right here. So you know how many watches that I've been in and out of. We have a, we have a rule at work. <laughs> it's called the Victor Berry rule where, you know, we like to have some employee benefits. You know, you can purchase a watch and not pay, you know, the retail price for it. But we had to put a rule of how many watches you can buy and sell because this guy was going through a new watch every like two weeks. Yeah. And we said, hey, you gotta save some watches for the clients. Yeah, yeah. Right. And I promise you it was not for profit, not for anything like that. I'm real indecisive, right? I think we're all that way to a certain extent. It's like you want something so, so, so bad, you finally obtain it, you get it, and that high kind of comes down, and then you're looking for it again, so it repeats. But I made a promise to my girl, you know, this right here is a 16610. So pre ceramic 1989 hose case that has a beautiful pumpkin dial, pumpkin hands on there. So that turn uh, nice patina, you know, due to natural sunlight over time. You have a lot of people that want to get that look, so they may put the dial in the oven, they'll cook the room to get it to, you know, tarnish and color. But this one was actually done by natural sunlight, so it's pretty cool. And uh, I got down on one knee in it, so not for sale, pretty sentimental at this point. All right, well, we just had a really good lunch. Gonna go back to the office, gotta keep grinding. Yes, sir. Now, I have a challenge for our YouTube viewers. Right now, I think, Vic, you have about 4,000 followers on Instagram. Yeah. If you can get to 5,000 by the end of this month, the month of July, 5,000, I will take him out to dinner and I will pick someone in the comments and treat them to something, whether that's sending you guys some merch, flying you guys out here. I'll do something for a winner. We'll draw, we'll pick them randomly, but let's get this guy to 5,000 followers by let's the end do of the it, month. Man. Let's do it. Hey guys, I wanted to elaborate a little bit more about following me on my IG. Uh, fresh inventory that we get in daily. First thing I'll do is get some good photos, videos, post it on my story. Uh, and it's a good time to see inventory before it has a chance to hit the website. A lot of watches that we get in sell before we even have time to advertise. So if you want to give me a follow, just check out my story daily. I'll make sure to keep that inventory coming for you guys. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Friday morning uh, here at the office. Um, we went ahead and took these out of the boxes already, um, So, but I haven't looked at them. Let's go ahead and take these over to Vic and check them out. Mr. Vic? But he's a client, though. Ooh, it's Christmas good. time. Uh -huh. I got a couple presents for you today. Let's see what we got here, man. So these came in this morning? Or? Yes, sir. The old man. school box. Fresh man. catches. Look at that. 116681. Looks didn't, pretty clean too. Didn't you just sell one of those too? Yeah, we just sold one yesterday. These don't last long. Current market price right now is around twenty-five thousand. Last one I sold for twenty-six five because that was a new style card uh, with the Mercedes hands. So if you notice on that one, it has your uh, previous reference regular blue hands. So uh, a little bit of a price difference there. But we'll list that one for about twenty-five k, and it is complete. So we'll be able to include the card box and uh, everything it came with. What else we got here? Ooh. Little forty bluesy. So the one one six six one three two tone. This one here, man. I had talked to Eric about it because a little bit of concern in the pictures. If you see, it's pretty yellow right there, but then even around that crown. We'll definitely have to get it cleaned up before we post this online, all that oxidation. Have you ever seen one like that before? Wasn't the one that uh, Dell had bought a while back, wasn't it completely oxidized on the bracelet? Like we that had- yellow gold, solid uh -huh, yellow gold. Yeah, yeah, we had to get it touched up. Just being exposed to different elements out there, whether it's chlorine in the hot tub, it's not a problem. We'll get that polished up and get it retail ready. And we'll probably end up listing that, I would say, probably around 17, 17, 5. It is a complete set, so that'll help. On to the next. Let's see what we have. A little Daytona two-tone complete set. Uh, this one here is a 116503. So they range from about 18 to, honestly, 24, depending on what year, how new. I would say on this one here, being a new style car, we'll probably list it, you know, around that 22 mark. Hey, Trent, can you crack that last box open uh, for me? Another yacht. Mm. Didn't we just sell one of these? You we sold did. this the other day, right? Yeah, sure mm -hmm. did. We sold the last one, if I want to say 32.5. That's a very 
understated watch. A lot of watch for the money. You're talking 42 millimeter. I didn't even realize for the longest that these actually have the same glide lock system that the uh, Samaritans have. So you can adjust it on the really? fly. Pretty neat watch, especially for the money. Is this Eric still that he mm -hmm. had? Yep, soul order. Yeah, so this is a soul order, but he sold it for 32.5. New style card. Pretty much brand new is what those go for, 32.5, 32. So if you guys want one, we can surely get another one. All right, so that's it for today. And uh, I want to start doing these more. I know you guys have been asking about the unboxings. I think that's something that will uh, cause some good content there. We can all learn about reference numbers. I'll be sure to include the current market price, what we're going to list it for. That way you get an inside and a little bit of knowledge behind the scenes there. All right, bro, can you get the out of here? What's up, bro? I'm, so, I'm trying to sell watches. So this is like a surprise unboxing. It's not a watch that's in here. Oh, oh yeah. Grand caliber tags. So it's a security tag, right? Yeah. Did you explain to everybody what it does? What do you mean? Like how it works? Like if you wrap, what is this? What part of the watch does this go on? The bracelet. Oh, there's two parts, right? Because this has like a clip. That's it. Oh, I see. It goes in like that. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool, eh? All right, guys. I'm going to say point blank. It's been a pretty frustrating week. I don't think it's necessarily anything that you guys are doing. I think there's a lot of things the sales team is doing incorrectly that I have to address with the sales team. I've had to put out a lot of customer service fires this week, right? And that can't happen. What I have here, we're going to go so simple where I'm just going to print a ton of these for now just because I think there needs to be a better process in place. This is kind of like four foundations that I want before a watch goes out. So for example, the first thing that we need to do is figure out what watches are going out today. Confirm that payment has been received, confirm that they've been processed through our systems, and then make sure that we set the watch and the prep station for the admins to take on the next step. I think something that is lacking is customer service. I think we're used to just putting a watch in a box and just shipping it out. This is such a relationship driven industry because the average price point of a watch that we sell is like 20 to 25,000. Like that's a ton of money and they can go and buy and sell these watches anywhere. Mm -hmm. So like the only way that we're going to separate ourselves is by the service and that is building that relationship. Moving forward, instead of just putting a watch in a box and shipping it, Deja, you're gonna call and confirm the shipping address with the client, let them know that it's gonna be shipped to the nearest FedEx location for insurance purposes, inform the client of when it's being shipped, when it's gonna arrive, give them the tracking number, and then I think you as well will then include the thank you card. I wanna make sure that the watch is cleaned before it's shipped. No more just fingerprints everywhere and shipping that out. Put on gloves, clean the watch, please, and then wind it and make sure it's set to the time zone of that client. By the time it gets the shipment, we're gonna have everything set up there for you Sutton. So then basically all you're doing is you're packaging the watch with the bubble wrap, putting it in the FedEx box, entering the tracking numbers into our systems and taking it out. But like before we get there, I think we need to slow down make sure everything is done correctly and just take a little bit more time to focus on the client, giving them a heads up, letting them know, cleaning the watch, all the little things. I think you guys have done a really good job with what you've been dealt, but I want to take it up a notch and make sure that we're providing the best service we can. Guys, I appreciate it. And I'm going to address it with the sales team and take it from there, but let's make sure we don't get any more fires <laughs> moving <laughs> forward. We'll, we'll take care of it, Jimmy. We cool. got you, man. Thanks guys. All right. Another sales meeting. Well, let's start with some good news. I think last Friday was probably one of our best days in recent weeks. We sold eight watches in one day. Given the market environment, that's, that's pretty solid. To recap, Vic, you had a neck and neck race with Marco at the end of the month, and you beat him by two. Okay. I was, that, I was wondering what it was because... <laughs> Actually, let me rephrase. You beat him by one because one backed out at yep. the last minute. And I was wondering if that was going to hurt me and make me fall behind. Or... No, cool, you, cool. you beat him by one watch. So too bad Marco's not here. He's actually working on some insurance stuff for a client. Last Friday was awesome. Eight watches in a day. It was a total team contribution. I believe, Eric, you had one. Alfred, you had two. I think you had four, Vic. And then I think Marco had one and Ryan might have had one. If that adds up to eight, but we had, I know we had eight watches. This meeting here is really to, to help the team 
like I'm not here to call anyone out individually. This is something to help create a more refined sales process, use it as a learning experience. It's been an interesting week. I've been on a lot of calls putting out fires with clients that have bought watches from us. And I think a lot of that has to do with miscommunication, whether it's the sales rep with the client or the sales rep and operations. I got off a phone with a client by the name of Avery. Uh, he bought a, I believe he bought a Daytona. Do you know which one it was? So 116519. 116519. And how much was that watch? $45,000. $45, in this situation here, I think what happened was the watch was coming in. We had sold it to the client, but the client, again, wasn't necessarily sure if they were buying it yet. We had the watch incoming. The client wanted to see some pictures of the watch, but obviously we didn't have pictures because it was incoming. And then I think what happened was because it was such a big deal, 45,000, the sales rep started to get a little bit too aggressive for payment. You know, we were reaching out to Avery saying, hey, we need payment, we need payment, we need payment. And when I spoke with him, the first red flag is when someone's asking for payment over and over in a very fast manner, that's, that's a huge red flag. Don't get too eager. Make sure that you know all of the information. Make sure you're communicating with the team because I think we had some miscommunication issues with one watch where we potentially would have double sold it. You know, we had it sold to a potential dealer and all of a sudden a client reached in and we, again, could have double sold that watch. Again, when talking with Avery, I think the feedback is make sure that you have all the information, be upfront. Just because the watch is incoming doesn't mean you need to sell it right off the bat. I know it's a $45,000 deal, like it's, it's a big deal, but setting proper expectations for the buyer because had he backed out, you know, that would have been a waste of an opportunity. In addition, we're trying to build relationships here. I think that's the biggest thing, which leads me into the second one, which is a client by the name of Javier. He reached out to one of the sales guys who then deferred it to a, another sales rep, right? Maybe this other sales rep has more insight on pricing, whatever the case may be. They, that wasn't the issue. The issue was the client wanted to consign the watch and didn't get a shipping label. The sales rep did the right thing by communicating with the operations team and the operations team dropped the ball there. That's something I'm gonna address with this, the operations team. But what I'm tired of is going through all of these different leads and looking at how we are communicating with the client. There's a lot of different places you can buy and sell a watch from. What makes us different? Honestly, it's nothing. People wanna buy from us because they've either watched our YouTube video and wanna root for one of you guys, or they wanna buy from us because they feel like we're credible, or more importantly, it should be the customer service. So I think we need to take more time answering these leads in a more professional manner because Javier, he was very hesitant to consign the watch with us after we didn't give him a shipping label. I got on a 25 minute call with him and he gets it, he knows that we're busy, but still it's the lack of communication. But when I talked with Javier, now that he's consigned the watch, he then says, hey, once that watch sells, I wanna get into a Batman. So boom, that is a consignment opportunity and then a sale opportunity. I think for the two newer sales guys, Ryan and Eric, I think you guys need to slow down. You guys are gonna cost the company money by over committing or getting a deal that backs out when we've committed to a watch. Like, take your time, control your process. If people are questioning you, it's because you likely don't sound like you know what's going on. Let's just do a better job at it because every lead, again, is an opportunity. And I can't tell you how many leads that we've gotten that are actual form submissions, not just an Instagram DM. Someone that took the time to fill out a form and we're not converting many of them. And I think it's because of what we're doing from a customer standpoint. All right, well, I wanna take a moment to apologize to Mr. Avery as well as Javier. You know, these are two clients of ours that, again, experience some customer service issues. I think. The team has to be doing a better job of building these relationships. Again, going through the CRM, looking at how they're communicating with the clients. Sometimes they're not hitting the leads. Sometimes they're very vague or short with their answers. I think, again, it's very unprofessional. For me to stand here and preach about culture and customer service, 
it's not a good luck when I'm saying that on YouTube and our team isn't doing that in reality. You know, you guys probably saw just a little bit of the sales room meeting that we had. You know, we just need to do a better job with customer service because, you know, Mr. Avery and as well as Javier, they can, they can buy their watch and sell their watch from, with anyone. What's gonna make us different is building relationships with clients, providing good customer service. I've preached it time and time and time again our team needs to step up with that. Unfortunately, it's not something that you change in a day or a week. It's something that we gotta stay on these sales guys. We gotta train them, develop them, make sure they're more professional in every aspect of their business. But again, I wanna take a moment to apologize to Mr. Avery as well as Javier for the experience that you had. And hopefully this is a learning experience for our team to improve. Cause that's what all we can do is improve week by week and I know that it's gonna take time, but at the same time, this is the area of focus for Grand Caliber. It is changing the culture and improving customer service. Yeah, it's an old date, just it's a plastic crystal 1601 or 1603. I'm gonna pop the band to see what the references are. It's got the wrong bracelet on it, that's the only problem, because now it doesn't wanna come off. How long have you had it? Uh, I only probably had it about a year. A year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I uh, went to a state sale and bought a box of jewelry. No, oh, really? For a hundred dollars. No way. That was in there. No way. Yeah. Damn, so 200 bucks, right? Yeah. No, no. I double your money. No, I'm just like, yeah, that's, that's awesome, dude. Yeah. But did you get anything else good in that box? Oh, uh, I got a, a little ring too. Yeah. Uh, but I uh, gave it to my son, I couldn't fit. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Um, mm -hmm. Well, that was, ever... that was the only thing worth if you ever find yourself um, at other estate sales and you need, you know, if you see watches or anything like that, yeah. or even diamonds, just give me a call. Are you okay with the check? That's fine. All right. Can I go cash it right now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Let me grab my checkbook up here back. Right. The appraiser, he uh, yeah. told me, told me about Marco. He was like, yeah, you looking for somebody to buy it? I know this dude. He good at, uh, he pretty fair and reasonable on the prices. And I said, all right, I hit him up when I'm ready to sell it. And I hit him up, I think it was yesterday. Yeah. And uh, he told me to come in today. So here we is now. Yeah. What should it be? It's a 1570 non-quick. You know, a lot of guys would rob these movements and slap them in uh, old sub cases because they didn't have the right movement. Cool, we're good. All right, brother. Thank you so much for coming appreciate in. I appreciate you. that. Welcome back to another Ask Us Anything. And I will admit, there wasn't that many questions in last week's segment. So come on guys, ask some questions below and we'll pick two or three every week. I was able to gather a few here. Um, so the first one is from Derek G. He says, all the in-stock watches are just Rolex, question mark. Right now we are Rolex heavy. The reason being is in this market environment, Rolex for us tends to be the most liquid watch to sell. It's easy to buy and sell Rolex. Uh, they tend to hold their value a little bit better than let's just say Omegas, Panerai's, IWC's. I think our client base is a little bit more heavy in Rolex as well. And so that's kind of where we geared our inventory is just in that particular brand. Doesn't mean we can't get you a Paddock or a AP or a different brand. Uh, we have some of those watches as well, and we hope to have more of those down the road, but just given this market environment, it's fluctuating day by day. We wanna be in things that are very liquid with the biggest audience. And so that's why we're, we're a little bit Rolex heavy. Next question by Now That's Funky. That's, that's a cool name. He or she said, you guys are using a lot of different advertising and social media to advertise the same stock. How do you make sure the same watch doesn't get sold at the same time on different platforms? That is a good question and a very tricky question. After several months of fine tuning and testing a new CRM system that pairs with our inventory management system. And therefore, if something sells off of the website, it's automatically removed from our inventory system. If a sales guy is in a pending sale, they'll just mark the watch on hold. This is all done on an app, it's mobile based, and it will then remove that watch from inventory for a period of time. The only spot where this gets a little bit challenging is we do sell in a lot of different Facebook groups um, and dealer groups, and therefore, as soon as it sells, it notifies the inventory system, so then the rest of the guys start taking those posts either down or mark them as sold in various groups. That is something that's tricky, it's something that we're 
looking to improve, but um, I just think it's part of the nature of the business. The last question here is by David T. It's a little longer. He says, if you have a watch on Chrono 24 and I call you with a question about the watch, am I supposed to return to Chrono 24 for the purchase of the watch knowing I will still pay 6.5% higher because of Chrono 24, or can I purchase the watch from you at 6.5% lower than the listed price at Chrono 24? The answer is yes, you can purchase it directly through us. On Chrono 24, there's a contact us tab where you can reach out to us. I don't think it'll say the specific name of the company, but it'll give you the location and how long they've been on the platform. So if you can determine that it is Grand Caliber, you can always reach out directly to us to purchase it, to save the 6.5%. You can just purchase it on our website as well. The point of Chrono24 is to get our products on a much bigger platform, to get our brand, our name, our inventory out there. But if you're clever enough to figure out the actual dealer that that watch belongs to, you can always reach out to them directly uh, and purchase it th through them. Some benefits of Chrono24 for consumers that are dealing with smaller businesses is that it adds a layer of security. You know, you pay through escrow, um, but if you're working with a bigger dealer like Grand Caliber or many of the other uh, great market dealers on YouTube, it really comes down to credibility. If you're comfortable with purchasing it through that great dealer, you can. Chrono24 adds an extra layer of security, but at the same time that comes at a premium of six and a half or, or even more percent on top of what you're purchasing. Leave a comment below. I'll try to answer two or three every single week. I would, like I said last week, it was, I mean, there was a lot of great feedback. Don't get me wrong, we're really appreciative of the feedback, but there weren't that many questions. So leave a question below. You know, lastly, I think you've seen through this episode, we're still a small business that's growing. There's a lot of frustration, but a lot of promise as well. You know, I think one of the big things I've realized is as a CEO, you know, you have good days, you have bad days. You can't just go in and fire the entire staff and start new. That's not really a business model. You know, what you realize is you have the talent that you have and you have to maximize every single person that works with you. You know, I think there's gonna be a lot of training that has to be done and I can't stress it enough. We wanna provide better customer service. We wanna be the best customer service watch company out there. I also need our team to step up you know, when they make a mistake, we're gonna call them out. Sometimes publicly, sometimes privately, you know, there are certain things that you wanna do privately, but I think our team needs to do a better job. At the end of the day, this is a small business. So you guys are seeing it firsthand. You know, we're growing week by week. We're gonna make mistakes, but we're also gonna improve and hopefully um, the honesty, the transparency, and, and kind of what you see is, is a result of improvement each week. Thanks for watching another episode of Grand Caliber. See you next week. Mm -hmm.